Creating a strong email marketing strategy is important because it helps you reach and connect with your target audience in a personalized way. It can also help increase sales at an affordable cost. One of the ways to go about your email marketing strategy is to create a newsletter. This can easily be done through various plugins if you are using a CMS platform like WordPress. Hello guys, welcome again to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how to integrate MailChimp with Elementor. Also, I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful pop-up form like this. If you want to integrate MailChimp with Elementor, there are two things you would need. You would be needing an Elementor Pro account and a MailChimp account. Of course, there are three ways to do this without you needing an Elementor Pro account. But for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to integrate MailChimp with Elementor using Elementor Pro. Also, I want you to know that you don't have to use MailChimp if that is not your preferred email marketing tool. Elementor also supports email marketing tools like MailerLite, ActiveCampaign, ConvertKit, GetResponse, MailPoint, and Aweber. So, the first step is to log into your MailChimp account. So, once you log into your MailChimp account, I want you to click on your profile picture down here. So, when you click on it, you click on, you then choose account and billing. Once you have that, you click on extras and click API keys. Then you scroll down to where your API key is. So, what you want to do is you click on create a new key. So you can see the API key has been created. You can see the dates here. So what you want to do now is to copy the API key that you created in your MailChimp account. Then you come down to Elementor, click on Settings. So when you click on Settings, you click on Integrations. On the Integrations page, you see so many different services that you can also use Elementor for. Like you can see recapture, you can see Facebook SDK, but this is what we need here, the MailChimp. So what you want to do is you add in your uh, MailChimp, you paste your MailChimp code here, then you click on validate, on validate API key, then you click on save changes. So what this does is it connects your MailChimp to your Elementor. So the next thing we want to do now is to create a, a, a newsletter pop-up form. So let's go ahead to do that. To create a MailChimp pop-up like this, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So what I want to do is navigate to templates here. When I navigate to templates here, you click on add new. When you click on add new, it's going to load up this page. So for the templates, you're going to click on pop-up here. So when you click on pop-up, the other thing you need to do is just name the, um, is just name the pop-up you want to create. So I'm just going to name this um, MailChimp because I think I have one there before. So what you want to then do is create templates. So once Elementor loads up, it's going to give you um, a lot of um, pop-up templates here. So if you want, you can choose one of these templates, but I'm just going to show you how to create one from scratch. So I'm going to close this. So what you want to do is um, click on add new section um click on the first one here so i'm going to add in um the header and the text here so i'm just going to name this sign up or whatever it is you want to name it so i'm going to send going to um make it put it at the center so for the um call to action here i'm just going to paste um a default message here so i'm going to centralize this as well as you can see it isn't that okay so i'm going to centralize this as well so the next thing you want to do is to input your is to import your form so i'm going to just going to put in the form here so once you put in the form again please always remember to remove the um message here so i'm going to remove that i'm going to um, switch up the label as well so it's all stylish so once you do that you want to customize this however however you want as well so you can change the input size you can I'm just going to go with um, 
I'm just going to go with medium here yeah. so you can um for the label as you can see it doesn't i don't really like it with the label but if you want to show which of the fields is really important but for email um for a newsletter both are important so um there's really no need to show um the labels but if you want to show it i want to emphasize you can click on required here so it shows that the email is important you can also make the um name important you can also make the name required by clicking on required here so but as i said i don't need them for this customization so i'm just going to switch that off so for the button you can also um, customize the button size however you want as well so i'm going to put that on medium as well you can change the column width so as you can see you can centralize it however it is you want but i prefer my buttons justified um, so I'm just going to switch this back to 100%. So if you want, you can change um, the um, the submit button as well. This is a newsletter, so there's, there really isn't a need to put send. So I'm just going to add something like subscribe now. So once you did that, you can also add icons. You can add icons here, but we don't need that. We don't need to add. Um, SVG or anything like that to this. So I'm just going to go to the next option here. So as you can see, there is no collect, um, there is no MailChimp here in the add action. So what you want to do is you click on MailChimp, then you're going to delete these two. So once you delete those two, what you then want to do is you close this. Actually, why you're doing this is this is like the follow up action after um, after um, a subscriber after a potential subscriber clicks on the sub um, the subscribe now button. So what this does is it's telling um, Elementor that once they click the subscribe now button, send the subscription to Elementor. You understand? So that's what that is for. So for the Mailchimp option. You're just going to let this load up since you already integrated MailChimp with Elementor. You're going to click on. You don't need to do anything here. So you're just going to click on your um, MailChimp audience account. So for the groups, if you have audience groups in your MailChimp accounts already, so you can always choose them here. Just choose them, but we don't need that. So for these tags, the tag option is to let um, MailChimp know where the subscriber came from came from so yeah I can just say something like um on page um on page pop up or let's say on page sub on page subscribe pop up yeah so I'm just going to add on page subscribe pop up so you can also choose to add double opt-in what the double opt-in option does is when someone subscribes, they are going to get a message, an email um, for them to confirm their subscription. It's um, good in a way, but for this option, I'm not, we don't need that. I'm going to cancel that out. So the next thing you want to do is the field mapping. So I'm just going to map the um, name field and the email field. So for the name field, I'm going to map it to, for the email field, I'm going to map it to email. For the name field, I'm going to map it to name. So that's that about that. So the next option is the steps. You don't know um, the step settings. You don't really need to do anything here. The other thing you might want to do is to customize your messages. So instead of for the success uh, for the success message, instead of the form was sent successfully, you can say thank you for um you can say something like Thank you for subscribing. You can say something like, thank you for subscribing. It's basic, I know, but you can just say that. So once you're done with that, what you want to do now is to customize your form. So there really isn't anything you want to do here, except of course, you might want to, um, you might want to make this name field and the email, you might want them to be on one, line so to do that um you come to column with yeah you come back to content here click on form fields then come back come to, click on name click on column which you're going to give that 50 percent 
so you click on email as well you're going to give that 50 percent so as you can see so if this is how you want it that's fine as well that's how you create that so there i'm not really going to spend more time much time on how you customize the form the form field and not what you then want to do now is just cost just general customization so you just want to give it um some padding and um margin so i'm just going to give this some top padding and bottom padding i'm going to also um, give it some inner padding so you can do this so that's that on that what you want to do now is to create conditions for the pop-up form to show so to do that you're just i'm just going to save this real quick yeah so when you click on publish you're going to get the conditions here so um where do you want um to display your templates i'm just going to say something like um grid. so i'm going to choose singular so when i choose singular, i can say i want it to show up on my post which is the blog page so you can also decide to um, choose like specific blog pages that you wanted to show up on and if you wanted to show up in certain categories you can do that here as well if you wanted to show up on in cert on certain pages as well you can do that like there are so many things you can do here so for the triggers the triggers is what what triggers the pop-up form to come up so is it on page load you can choose on page load and choose how many seconds you want it to be so I can say when the page loads, I want it to come up after five seconds. So you can say um, you want it to come up on scroll, like when someone scrolls down your blog page, for example, how many um, screen percentage do you want them, do you want, um, them to go before the pop-up comes up? So I'm just going to choose something like 30%. So once they scroll down by 30%, the pop-up is going to come up. So on scroll to element, you don't need to bother yourself on this. So for the on clicks, if you want it to come up um, once they click on um, a certain part of your website, this has to be designed as well. So let's not spend too much time on this. So after inactivity, so let's say they're on a page and they are not doing anything for like, let's say 20 seconds, the pop-up form can come up. So on page exit intents, like when someone wants to leave that, when someone wants to leave the page, like you can let the pop-up form come up as well. So for the advanced rule, this you don't really need to spend much time on this. So what you then want to do is click on save and close. So you're going to save, click on save and close. Once you click on save and close, it's going to save up. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. So let's click on preview. So as you can see, I'm just going to put a name here. I'm going to put in only on going to just choose an email here so let's see as you can see thank you for subscribing it works well so if you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more tutorials like this please leave a con please leave a comment down below Thank you.